Uh, Kentaro, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm chairing this today, and we just wanted to thank you for coming and making this presentation. So yes. um, have, have you had a chance to introduce yourself yet? Uh, yes, thank you for attending my presentation. Uh, my name is Kentaro Indo from uh, Euras Energy. So today I'm going to talk about the uh, scatter data analysis using the, the machine learning technique and also the incorporated with I, uh, IoT, IoT technology. Uh, yes, I'm presenting from Tokyo. It's still, you can see my back clock, right? It's a six, six o'clock, but uh, actually it's a 6 a.m. I came to the office very early today <laughs> for this actually, yes. So, thank you, uh, thank you. Yes, my pleasure. Yeah, just went. Oh, yes. So the uh, this is uh, the brief introduction of uh, Euras Energy. We have the uh, asset, the wind farm asset, all over the places. The total uh, capacity is about the three gigawatt. So I'm belong to the uh, Tokyo office and uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm focusing on the operation and the maintenance for the Japanese asset. And the recent our, the one of our focuses, recent our focuses is uh, digital transformation for the uh, effective operation and the maintenance workflow. And we collect the data, we have about 450 window turbines in, in Japan and we collect uh, all the data to the cloud. And the data is not just the SCADA data, but also the uh, the work record and uh, also the inventory and the accounting information there. And in the database, we link the all information together and uh, the analyze them and sometimes forecast. And based on the uh, uh, this analysis out, we share the information uh, within the company and the using the this information to the decision making, and also reflect to the planning and the execution of the operation and the maintenance, and uh, the measure the data again, and that we are trying to establish the uh, seamless workflow, the in the in our O and uh, process in Japan. So today, uh, my my talk is about the uh, one piece of uh, our activity, which is the uh, scatter data analysis and uh, also the uh, machine learning technique. And uh, particularly today, uh, I'm going to focus on the uh, yield misalignment, Estimate, estimating the yield, yield misalignment using the uh, scatter data, and also the going uh, going beyond. Uh, we are trying to utilize the uh, IoT technology and uh, collect the your misalignment in real time. But this is still our ongoing study. Haven't uh, haven't finished yet. So this is the uh, the brief overview, you no know, brief exp explanation of your misalignment. So ideally the the wind direction and the wind bane is uh, aligned perfectly to maximize the uh, production. But in fact the, uh, some turbines, the window bay and the, the yaw or the cell is not very well aligned. In this case, in this case, we may have the uh, uh, some production loss. And actually, the uh, the uh, uh, reality is more complicated because we have to. Uh, think about the transfer function for the wind vane even the the wind is coming from the uh uh the window turbine facing facing to the uh wind direction wind the actually the wind vane uh, may may uh window may may be a little bit tilted because of the the wind direction is affected by the motion of the of the blade rotation, and the, uh, yes, and this incident angle is also depend on the wind speed and also the density of the air. And uh, if we want to align the wind turbine perfectly, we have to uh, take the all, all these uh, environmental uh, factor into account. 
the actual yield assignment is uh, the the in, uh, include the this uh, mechanical assignment also the uh, aerodynamic assignment together. Yes, this uh, assignment can eat the significant AP. It can be the few percent. So this is uh, just a quick calculation of the how much loss uh, to be expected due to the uh, the yield misalignment. So the vertical axis is production loss and the horizontal axis is misalignment angle. So it said that this uh, production loss uh, to follow the uh, uh, cosine, uh, to cosine, cosine square or cosine cube and the, uh, the lots of turbine have the uh, four, four degree, four degree misalignment. In that case, we may be losing the uh, percent, percent of the uh, production. So cost of the misalignment can be the uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical misalignment installed at, uh, at the beginning. The another one is transfer function of the, uh, the wind rain. But this one is very complicated because uh, transfer function can be affected by the uh, wind speed and the uh, air density. So for example, this is an example of the major of the, the Nassel light, uh, the measurement of the Nassel LiDAR. So the graph uh, bottom is a distribution of uh, the uh, wind direction relative to nacelle. So in this case, the misalignment is uh, about the uh, five, deg uh, 5 degree. And also if we look at the uh, top figure, this is a uh, wind speed. And this misalignment angle is uh, depending on the uh, wind speed in this case. So our challenge is uh, 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 we want to maximize the uh, uh, the the production by optimizing the yield direction in real time. So this is uh, the uh, the production yes uh, production efficiency estimated from the scatter data, not necessarily LiDAR data, but the scatter data. And the bottom figure is a uh, window direction uh, relative to nacelle measured by uh, measured by the scatter. So uh, scatter data said the yo, yo is uh, well aligned at uh, around the zero, which is kind of expected. But actually, if estimate the production e efficiency from the uh, actually uh, from the power curve, the maximum. Maximum production is not at zero, but the slightly shifted to about the uh, the in this case about uh, seven or eight degree. So to maximize the uh, production, we have to move the DC uh, uh, the peak to here. So going further, uh, we utilize. utilize the machine learning technique, we built the machine learning model based on the air temperature and the even your direction and the wind speed. And we, we uh, by using the, this machine learning model for the individual turbine, that we are able to estimate the your misalignment angle at any the wind speed and any your direction and any uh, air temperature. Because uh, as I said earlier, that this misalignment angle is uh, also due to the uh, transfer function, and this transfer function is uh, the the based on the uh, depending on the wind speed and the uh, air density and even the turbulence intensity, which is uh, might be depending on the uh, the 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 your direction. So what we are thinking is, so that uh, usually the measurement from measurement from uh, the wind speed uh, anemometer and the wind vane is the signal is go into the uh, uh, turbine controller. But actually, this uh, the measurement is affected by the uh, many lots of things. 
And what we are thinking is uh, since we built, we are able to build the, uh, the, the model of the transfer function, we adjust uh, the, this, uh, the wind vane measure by using the I IoT device. In, we embedded the, our, uh, our algorithm into the IoT device to collect the wind, wind vane signal, then send the signal to the uh, turbine controller. Yes, this is just what I said. And we install the, this IoT device in, in the nacelle and we control the wind vane signal and even we keep learning, uh, keep learning the, the model so that we are able to uh, get continuously improve the, our own model. Yes. So this is the uh, before and after correction. This is before uh, before correction. So uh, this is the same data as I uh, as I showed the earlier. And this in this case the the this window turbine have about the uh, the five degree misalignment, and also the this misalignment angle is uh, uh, depending on the uh, window speed. But if we correct in real time. The, we are able to improve the uh, alignment like this. This is not, uh, uh, yes, we are able to correct the uh, misalignment. So this is a still simulated data. And in this case, we are able to in improve the uh, production about, about by 1%. So I'm going to show the demo Uh, yes, I'm going to show the demo, and the uh, demo show the three different modes. One is uh, no no correction, and the two uh, number two is a bias uh, correction, which is uh, I correct the uh, constant offset to wind direction, and the number three is a dynamic correction, which is adjust uh, uh, adjust the the wind vane signal in real time. Depending on the uh, the temperature, the air temperature, window speed, and even the nacelle direction. Moment. Yes. So this one is power curve. So we are constantly measuring the power curve. It's a scalar data. And the figure on the on the right is a nacelle, uh, nacelle LIDAR view, nacelle LIDAR measurement. So as you can see, the distribution, oh, just a moment. As you can see, the Nasser uh, LIDAR measurement said the uh, your misalignment is uh, about five degree, and even we ob uh, we can see the uh, misalignment uh, as a function of the wind speed. Oh, just a moment. Yes, so this is uh, that we measure and uh, analyze uh, in I IoT device in real time. And uh, this is, uh, oh sorry, this is estimated uh, your misalignment detection in real time. So now uh, we adjust, uh, we put the bias on the constant bias to the yield direction. So as you can see, Nasser LIDAR view is shifting to the, uh, yes, the misalignment shifting to the center, but uh, still we see the, uh, the yield misalignment due to, uh, depending on the window speed. So this is uh, the scalar data analysis again, the misalignment uh, towers, go towers to the zero. And also the misalignment also uh, 
is around zero. But still, we see the missile, uh, dynamic yaw missile meant to do to the wind speed. But once activate the dynamic correction, which uh, correct the yaw missile meant, uh, uh, depending on the wind speed and the ambient temperature and the yaw direction. Yes, and the production difference is, uh, it was about the uh, few, few percent, but it's uh, almost become uh, BM zero. Yes, so uh, this is the still uh, ongoing, uh, our ongoing study but uh, what we are doing uh, today is uh, we are trying to uh, build the EO assignment model and uh, implement into the I IoT device and uh, install the, this device into the nacelle to control the EO assignment uh, real time in real time to maximize the uh, production. And uh, still we are uh, by, uh, uh, violating the, this method in comparison with uh, the nacelle riders. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. That's uh, wonderful, Kentaro. Thank you for that presentation. How did you uh, do? I how did how did you decide to create custom hardware uh, and go beyond just the data that's provided um, by SCADA systems? That's good. So uh, actually. Uh, so U.S. Energy have our own the, uh, asset and own, own team, right? And these services at this point only for the uh, U, for U.S. Energy. We are not really thinking about to sell the this service to outside yet at this point. Right. But in in the future, if we realize the market, we maybe, yeah. How did uh, what kind of performance enhancement do you see over just analyzing <clears throat> SCADA data for yaw misalignment? So if you what kind of improvement? Yes, probably uh, one one percent in, in production. Yes, uh, it's uh, we expect about the one percent. You expect to recover one percent of production, and if yes. you use using your method, and if you didn't have the custom hardware, if you just based the predict uh, yaw misalignment on mm. um, SCADA data, right? You didn't use custom hardware. How much, how much more effective is your approach as a result of, of using how the hardware that you created? So, so some uh, are utilizing just SCADA data coming off of the turbine yes, to make yes. to predict yaw misalignment. Mm -hmm. How much better is this approach than than what most fleets are doing, which is just oh. utilizing the SCADA data to kind of make a prediction about yaw misalignment? So, uh, so usually the to correct the yaw misalignment, everybody using NASA rider these days, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, this method is not as good as NASA rider because uh, uh, actually the still we are validating how 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 consist consistent this method with uh, the NASA rider, but uh, probably the NASA rider is. Uh, I can't really sell the number, uh, tell, tell the number because I don't know yet, but uh, we are trying to be equivalent to the Nacelle LiDAR. But one of the advantage of Nacelle LiDAR is they measure the wind direction probably 100 meters ahead of the wind turbines, right? And uh, Nacelle LiDAR is not just uh, adjusting the your, your alignment, but also the kind of the 10 second, about 10 second uh, before the actual the wind arrive, ten, ten seconds in advance to 
the the actual wind arrive to the wind turbine, right? In in that case, the advantage of the nacelle nacelle rider is uh, that they have a the ten second time to adjust the pitch. For example, it's also improve improve the uh, production. So in terms of that, probably the nacelle rider is better. But the advantage of scatter data is uh, that it's uh, it's cheaper. We don't need the additional hardware. So this is one of the advantage. And also Nacelle Rider is a little bit expensive, right? And we, uh, the first, we have to decide which turbine to go with the Nacelle Rider. But we have to identify which turbines your missile is big. The we have to, we need a fast screening to install the Nacelle Rider first. And also the scalar, scalar data can be the fast screening. It's very impressive what you've done. Um, what are your What are your plans? What What is What is your roadmap look like? Um, I think uh, we are uh, we are also working with the university, and I uh, I probably have to wait until the 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 doctor says is finished. So it's probably one year and two year ahead. That's wonderful. Well, we, we let's see. We have some questions coming in. So, the first from Jim Kyles is: Does your lock device modify controls? Just a moment. Oh, I can't see. Does no? Uh, I think uh, uh, we intend. We don't modify the control, but we modify the wind vane signal. So we don't want to modif uh, modif modify the uh, control logic in the wind turbine, right? But we, we modify the wind vane signal. Mm -hmm. So you're essentially causing the turbine to behave in a different way by modifying its input. Yes, yes that's right. And does that cause the turbine to draw more or less than it would normally? Like per period of time? Uh, no, we, we, need, we, need, we need more tests. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. We don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. It's fascinating. Um, Jim, do you, do you want to post any other sort of questions that about this sort of this line of questioning that you have? So you've, you, okay. Thanks, Jim. Uh, we have another question from Karsten. How much data is needed, I guess, to so do this? Are using, yes, uh, we are using the uh, not uh, 10 minutes uh, averaging data, but uh, we are going to use a 10 second uh, 10 second data, not average. Okay. And uh, yes, period would be in case of that 10 second data, probably we need the uh, one month of the data. That's great. Uh, any other questions from uh, the audience? So the clarification is with 10 minute data, six months, I think the answer was, you said, you said ten, one month ten of data, correct? Yes, 10, ten second seconds. data uh, with one month of historical data. Any other uh, questions? So the question was 10 seconds was one month. What is, what is it with 10 minutes? data. So if you're only dealing with 10 minute data. Yes, if you, probably, uh, if you use the 10 minutes data, I think uh, uh, it's depend on the confidence, confidence interval, but uh, we need probably the three months data. Three months of data. Okay. At least, yes. For the accuracy. Yeah. Okay, we've got another question. Are you considering changes in transfer functions of WS measurements, wind speed measurements, due to your corrections? DUT 
No, I, I don't think so. I uh, probably don't understand the question. Can, can you repeat again? Sure. Are you considering changes in transfer function of wind speed measurements ah, due to your oh, No, 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 no. Okay. We don't. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? Okay. Well, uh, this was wonderful. Let's all give a round of applause uh, because I think this represents a tremendous amount of work and um, it's a very interesting approach. And um, thank you very much for making yourself available at 6 a.m. to share this with yeah. us. No problem. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, you're getting plenty of, of claps right now from the audience. Thank you very so, much. Yeah. Um, well, I think that uh, we're pretty close to uh, the end of your session. So is there anything you'd mm -hmm. like to say before we, we end the session? Uh, I'm good. Thank you very much for attending my presentation. Yes. <laughs> Great. Hopefully next time I can, I can show the, uh, the finalized version of this uh, IoT device. That would be great. Yes. Uh, well, well, we'll look forward to that. Thank you so much. And uh, I think we'll much. exit out of this now. Yes, thank yeah. you. And we'll exit out of this and we'll see you in the, the final, final moments of the day. Thank you very much. Bye for now.